Hello, everybody. It is December 26, 2018. Did you hear that Trump, Trump tweeted by the dip, by the dip. Do you know that, I think it was 2016, but it might have been earlier, that he said he doesn't play the stock market, but he's now tweeting on Christmas Day, a president of the United States has tweeted by the dip. Go on, guys. You play the stock market. I don't, but don't, don't do as I do. Do as I say. Play the stock market by the dip. All right. Um, well, many are trying to understand, speculate as to why the president told everybody, told his uh, supporters because the other people don't listen to him, but told his supporters, you gamble. Isn't he a Christian? It's gambling. The stock market is like Las Vegas, except everybody just kind of bumps it up a level. It's gambling. So a Christian president tells his supporters to gamble, buy the dip. Why? Well, many people have speculated that uh, it's to prop up the stock market. You know, all of those losses in Christmas Eve, oh, they, uh, the stock market really took uh, a real big dip. But, wow, man, Wall Street Wild stocks roared back. They're up about 500. All right. Oh, man. Okay. Um The economy is doing so beautifully. Unemployment, the lowest it has been ever. Trump, the miracle worker, he literally, he literally, he turned around the economy in like six months. And then his first year, I mean, the economy was doing better than ever and people are employed. And then you get these headlines on Trump like, Holiday retail sales strongest in years because Americans are, well, we're back, right? They're employed and they're buying. Yeah, consumerism isn't going down. It's going up. I am getting really <laughs> unbelievably, like, tired. It's exhausting to have to um, counter the lies. It, it's, we're, we're so saturated in lies. And what is really uh, disheartening is to see so many people who are quote unquote awake really going for the lie as if it's truth because they support Trump. Um, the, the economy, oh, it is not doing well. And, okay, the stock market, two indicators of how well our economy is doing has been housing sales and home sales and Wall Street. The fluctuations are wild. So now we're back up. Yeah, roars back up. Christmas Eve, stock market was closed yesterday, but Christmas Eve, whoa, real low, lots of losses. Today, oh, we're back up. These fluctuations uh, show that our economy, well, for those who know a little bit about how all of it is watching this stage play, the manufacturing, the manipulations. Uh, if anybody thinks that we actually live in a country that has a free market, whoa, man, are you living a delusion? But um, these fluctuations, these great fluctuations means that our economy is so vulnerable, so fragile, so ready for a plunge, like a lot of people are saying. 
we see these this kind of volatility every time the stock market has crashed and there's an awful lot of people more and more saying 2019 is not going to be sweet at all summer is probably Larry summers uh, raises chance of recession next to next year to 60 percent ow woo economic growth slowing around the world but it's doing fabulously here in the United States that's because we artificially prop up the economy we all know that right and we know that Americans are really hurting that more and more are living paycheck to paycheck. So how is it that retail sales, consumerism is back too? Because everything is a lie. These kinds of headlines, it's the support for the Trump administration saying the economy has just brilliantly bounced back since Trump has been in office. Now, did he do that by the dip? to uh, steal more money from Americans, perhaps. Did he say buy the dip to prop up the market? Back up 600, yay, because we're not ready to collapse? Possibly. Who knows? But the one thing that I can say for sure, we don't know, we can only speculate. And that means that we live in the country of the lie when we cannot know for sure what the hell is going on anywhere. Stocks rose sharply in volatile trading on Wednesday as investors tried to regain some of the steep losses. Will the gains remain steady? I don't think so, but we'll see, right? So the worst is yet to come. Some more and more people like Mark Jolly, who uh, apparently is, um, well, people are really listening to him now say, I would love to be more optimistic, but I just don't see too many positives out there. I think the worst is yet to come next year. Most markets around the world started to fall well before U.S. markets did because U.S. markets are artificially propped up. Everything is artificial. It ain't real. We are living in a house of cards. And all it will take is one flick of a finger at a card and boom, they all come crumbling down. Nothing. There is no security in this country at all. Left. Boom. Gone. Now, we're all vulnerable to, uh, it could be, it could be that that massive shit hits the fan, really never comes. It's the continual slow pace of shit hits the fan with more and more Americans going over the edge, leaving the middle class, being dumped into a lower class, dumped into poverty. And you won't even know it because those people you don't hear from. You don't hear from the millions and millions and millions and millions of Americans whose lives have been destroyed. Why? Because there's a lot of shame. And especially in this country, when everybody attacks the victim and Sure enough, even those who understand the external factors, there's still that psyche. The social engineering has been brilliant. We have been socially engineered to blame the victim. It's your fault. See, the economy is doing well. That's what mainstream media tells us. And there are jobs out there. That's what mainstream media tells us. The TV told me that things are good. So. Your circumstance, it's all about your own character. You're not thinking positively. You're lazy. You're this, you're that. So when people 
get dumped, you don't hear from them. You hear from those who are still comfortable, who haven't suffered the consequences yet. And I have been, you know, I do a lot of thinking. And I think this world is your world. Those of you who have not suffered the consequences, it's your world. We hear your voice. And the voice of all of those who are no longer okay get silenced. Trump supporters, didn't he campaign just like every other uh, during these campaigns, every president says, I'm going to reduce the debt. Every president reduced the debt. They come into office, the debt increases. It has increased in one year, one trillion three hundred seventy billion seven hundred and sixty million six hundred and eighty four thousand four hundred and forty one dollars and fifty four cents. That's Trump. Um, there is simply no more room for stimulus spending because we have already been spending money like drunken sailors that think that they are likely to die tomorrow. President Trump, Chuck Schumer, square off on their $5 billion for a border wall funding, uh, but nobody on Capitol Hill is even talking about the $1.37 trillion that we just added to the national debt. Where the hell? are our priorities. Hello? We're committing national suicide. It continues. Sorry to um, burst your bubble. And if it doesn't burst your bubble, sorry to make you angry. But no, you are hearing lies and more and more Americans are suffering and this country is either going to go off the cliff or it's going to continue its steady decline. Uh, that steadiness will just continue to accelerate. And you won't even know it because you're not going to hear from all of the people who have been dumped, trashed, destroyed. No matter what happens with border wall funding, the U.S. will continue to steamroll Toward, toward financial oblivion unless something is done about the horrific debt. I'll build that wall. Um, this was amazing. Austin Murphy, he wrote this article for The Atlantic, which I read, uh, but here's a little excerpt. Austin Murphy, who had a 33-year, uh, 33 33-year, 33 how is it that everything is 33? Hmm. Okay. Year career in journalism. And Murphy had interviewed five presidents, wrote thousands of articles for Sports Illustrated, many of them cover stories, and he's now delivering packages for Amazon. Let's face it, when you're a college-educated 57-year-old slinging uh, parcels for a living, something in your life has not gone according to plan. There are many external factors taking people out left and right. America's future is going to be less bright, far less bright than its past. If we don't get things turned around right now, there is absolutely no indication that that's going to happen. Our national problems are multiplying. The conditions for a perfect storm are rapidly coming together. Pessimism is quickly growing all across America. But hey... We just had a fabulous, um, the sales, the holiday sales, consumerism. Boy, Americans are just doing well. Bullshit. Um, 
The other indicator, housing or home sales, real estate. So you see the volatility on Wall Street. Indication that we're not doing well and crisis that they have been talking about for months because of the incredible losses on Wall Street. Now we're seeing so much volatility. Um, could that mean we are looking at another huge crash coming soon? Yeah. U.S. home sales collapsing. Homes are unaffordable. So when you look at that, you know the economy is do not doing well. But you're to believe Trump and to believe, you know, all of these headlines on drugs that say, hey, great, great uh, holiday season. Sales just were blooming. And then we see every quarter the IRS, these headlines that they make record breaking amounts coming from Americans and I wonder how the hell is that so it I I think it's been throughout Trump his entire time and in um, in the White House these headlines every quarter IRS record-breaking collection then the next quarter IRS record-breaking collection and Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. Most of them are. How is that possible? Oh, could it be a lie? Yeah. So home prices, fewer people can afford a house. That means the economy is not doing well. And then of course we have these wars, the endless wars. During Trump's, you know, time, uh, the military-industrial complex, whoa, man, that really has uh, skyrocketed their profits. But this guy, who is a, um, a veteran, um, U.S. Army major, he wrote, despite sudden moves in Syria and Afghanistan, the United States remains entrenched in a set of military inten interventions across significant parts of the world, more more bombing, my God, the bombing, the bombing, the bombing. What was it? Um, the United States dropped since 2001. Maybe it was an article I read, not a headline, but how many bombs have we dropped around the world? 290,000 plus bombs. We're destroying countries left and right. You really think that that's going to stop? It's not going to stop. So I have said, yeah, uh-huh, uh, this uh, pullout, you got to think, no, this isn't Trump getting at us out of war. Uh, in fact, you can take a look at um, these headlines on global research <laughs> and read the articles. Um, U.S. pulls out and France sending more troops. There was an article, and I couldn't find it, Italians, Italy is sending troops to Syria. Private contractors. See, government mil military, that will be absolute, uh, obsolete soon. Corporations are really ru uh, ruling the world. And corporations are using private security contractors. They use mercenaries. They hire private contractors to fight their wars. The United States does too. We've got private contractors in Syria. We have them in many countries, but in Syria. So those private contractors will the numbers of those contractors will only increase. It's perfect because 
there's no accountability for what they do. So we're not pulling out of Afghanistan or Syria. We've just changed the players. And when you look at some of these headlines, you know, it's uh, Bolton threatens to force Africa to choose between the U.S. and China. None of these wars are ending. All agendas continue. Nothing is getting better. The crumbs that you're thrown are just that. Um, but if, you know, I guess people really do need to just hang on to something so they're filled with hope and they can go on not feeling uh, what is really happening. But unfortunately, that means they're ignoring reality. Illegal land grab and human rights abuses in the Congo. Terrorism is made in the USA. The global war on terrorism is a fabrication, a big lie. How long, how, how long do we have to continually, continually try to get through to people? It just goes on endlessly. The war on terrorism is fake. Uh, the health risks of Wi-Fi and coming 5G. It's like an endless repeat. Um, well, the U.S. is planning a major war with Russia and China. Global economy tweeters or teeters on the brink. Tweeters. <laughs> That's only reflective of the world that we are living in. The tweets. Uh, U.S. withdrawal from Syria paves way for Israel strikes. So uh, that's also what I just wanted to show you. But I do want to read here that um, people are waking up like this uh, U.S. Army major. It's unfortunate that it's 2018 now. And so the exponential increase in the suffering of the, the world's people due to the United States has so greatly, oh my God, it's like, so 2018, late in the game. Um, but this article is showing you that Trump is just going on the well-worn track of Bush Obama style for forever wars and a populace obsessed and distracted by the president's camera grabbing persona seemed hardly to notice that this country continued to exist in a state of perpetual war he's got you distracted with that wall which is ridiculous because do you remember in, God, I can't remember, it was during the Obama years that we were flying in refugees using UPS cargo planes coming in at, you know, the dark of night. They'll be flown in, they'll be going under. It's not going to prevent illegal immigration, but hey, donate and support our president because he is taking a firm stand. I'm shutting down the government. That's it. I'm going to fight with Charles Schumer to get that $5 billion to construct 215 miles. Do you not see the idiocy and everything? Uh, but here, you know, maybe it's time to start thinking of those adults. So he's He's giving Trump a pass 
It has nothing to do with Trump. It's his advisors, those generals, that keep pulling him back into these endless wars. No, Trump has nothing to do with it. Um, but he's also, you know, you got the adult children and you got the few adults. And those adults, well, they don't seem to have much pull or influence because they are the mature um, people who want us out of these wars. So here he's start thinking of those adults as tools, the, the child adult, I will say, um, of a military industrial congressional complex that feeds Americans ample servings of endless war year after year, decade after decade. In truth, in this century, presidents change, but the failing policies haven't. The same is true for Trump. And what do we have? The pullout. Yay, our troops are coming back home. Israel preparing for comprehensive war in Syria? What? What? Israel strikes Syria in first attack after U.S. announces pullout? Do you really think Trump pulled our troops out, leaving Israel vulnerable? That, that any, any politician in our country could say, ah, fuck you, Israel, you're on your own. <laughs> our greatest ally with you know, the Zionists controlling the United States government. Really, all a stage play. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Yeah, we left Israel vulnerable, pulling out our troops, saying, that's it, we're going home. And we left all of those... Uh, troops from Iran sitting in Syria and Iran wants to wipe Israel from the face of the map and please 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 question everything don't you know look it's so nice to believe that you got a guy in the White House who's working for you and he's doing all the right things and Yay, 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 yay. Ha, ha. Good. Okay. So, America has been made great again, and I can just go on about my life not worrying about anything. You have a shitload to worry about. Joy to the world postponed. 600,000 homeless in our country. Things worsening over time because the bipartisan opposition in Washington Oh, that bipartisan opposition in Washington? Staged play. Remember when Obama came into office and the Democrats had a majority in the House and Senate? Ooh, wow. Democrats in the White House, in the Senate, in the House. So many of Obama's promises could have been legislated and manifested and come true, but what happened? They weren't. Hmm. And then two years later, Democrats, man, you lost the House. Did you lose the Senate again? I can't remember. You see, when a party has a whole lot of power in Washington, they can get a lot of things done. But they are not to get a lot of things done. That's those things to benefit the American people. So that loss two years later was manufactured. Because, well, if the Democrats stay in control, House, Senate, White House, then Americans might catch on. Something's wrong here. Why aren't they passing legislation? Because we have so much power now. Let's put Republicans in the House two years later and do that. God, we can't get anything done. Gridlock, so much uh, by uh, partisan fighting and opposition and everything stalls and 
Uh, but when they want to actually pass legislation, and usually that legislation is stripping Americans of their freedom, uh, they can do it very quickly. You see, the stage play has become so obvious. And the manufacturing of, you know, the, um, the events that take place in the stage play, they have become so obvious that it's very frustrating to see Americans, especially those in the awake crowd who are still buying into it, but many, you know, we, we're in bad shape. The homeless in America, many are the veterans. Okay, America treats its own with disdain. Yeah for a long, 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 oh, decades, disdain for those troops. You know, that yellow ribbon that has been stuck on cars, you know, 2003. Oh, I support my troops. You know, it's a lie. Uh, Americans are very much a part of the lie. No longer involved in U.S. wars of aggression. They come home, they're unwanted, and they have no opportunity and they get treated like shit. No, we don't support troops. Sorry. Um, other working individuals, families with children earning poverty or sub-poverty wages are forced to make tough choices, unable to afford all essentials of life. In Chicago, there were 80,000 in the city homeless in 2016. It's a national scandal. That has been going on for decades, and we can't seem to solve it. No, we have only increasing numbers of homeless. Symptomatic of an uncaring nation. Yeah. The richest nation in the world doesn't give a damn about its poor or disadvantaged. Its resources increasingly earmarked for militarism, endless wars, corporate handouts, just what Trump is doing. How hungry is America? Quite hungry. 2017, wow. One in six households are hungry. Children are especially affected. Too many people in every region, state, community have been left behind in the economic recovery from the Great Recession and are still struggling to put food on the table. There was no recovery. No recovery. And things are only getting worse, and more and more millions are falling into poverty. Yeah, the so-called Great Recession is a protracted, unreported Great Depression for tens of millions of Americans, including, no, we don't have, what, 3.9% unemployment, 21.3% uh, of unemployed working individuals. And then we have countless numbers in the millions of the underemployed, countless Americans working three jobs, getting minimum wage, when, oh, well, that's not what they had planned. That's not what they were living before. Uh, victims of an unprecedented wealth disparity in the country, the same thing going on through the West and everywhere. Uh, low wages don't keep up with inflation. Everything just keeps getting higher, more expensive, while wages remain stagnant. But the economy is doing great, and Americans are back at work, and they're just buying up a storm. Tens of millions of suffering people in the United States. War theaters, the hardship, the dangers, and misery take on entirely new meanings. No joy to the world this holiday season or any other time for years. For years. I say plural, but uh, just this year, for most people in most parts of the world, what did they endure? A daily struggle to survive life. Put there, not due to anything they did. Victims of U.S.-led dark forces but I'll support my troops. Yay, they're great. And when I see them in stores, I'll say, thank you for your service. <laughs> I don't. Um, we want to maintain delusion after delusion, lie after lie, because it does make 
us feel more comfortable. But joy did not arrive on Christmas. To more people around the world and more Americans here in this country this year, more than last year, because more and more, you don't see them, you don't hear from them. But because I'm one of them, I check. I do the research. There's more and more of us. And you listening, when's your time? It's coming. You can guarantee it.